week of V-Life. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. We're having some technical difficulties back here. Lights are falling down. But it's okay. It's a beautiful evening here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I am so happy to be with you. Um, if you were with us last week, we talked about... Oops, we're having some difficulties here. We're going. We talked about actually learning how to accept what you cannot change and then change what you can change. And many of you, um, and I congratulate you on this, many of you went ahead and um, got away and really did that activity, got to your, um, got by yourself and went through that process. And I really commend you for that. I've been working on myself. As I always say every week, this is a, this is a journey that I'm sharing with you. We're all on this journey together for self-discovery and to unearth all the gems that are inside of us, okay? Because we are some valuable beings. And no, not every day am I on sky high, sky high. And not every day am I feeling great. Sometimes I feel way down with the responsibilities of life and issues and situations and circumstances, but that's okay. Because that's what being on a journey is about. What good are the the highest point of, you know, getting to the highest point of the roller coaster if there's no dip. You got to have a dip, right? So um, I'm excited to be with you. We are reading. If you guys did get your book, we are still reading We, a manifesto for women everywhere, nine principles for a more meaningful life. And if you have not gotten that book, I'm really going to encourage you to go ahead and do that because it is, it has really started me on this journey you know I'm not I haven't I haven't um, just been reading this book I've actually been reading other things and the book has really sparked my interest in other things and had me go in all kinds of different directions or I have found a point that I thought was really meaningful and um, transformational for me and then I would go and I would go deeper on that point which brings me to today's topic today we are talking about the five anger states. Now I'm going to go back to that slide real quick. I want you to take a look at that. The five anger states. Now, is there anybody out here that knows what I mean? Has anybody out there been feeling like this poor woman right here? Like, look at the expression on her face. She wants to tear her own hair out. She wants to tear your hair out. This woman is going through something. And as women, sometimes that's exactly how we feel. And it also shows up in different ways for different people. That's the other thing. How, how do you deal with anger? Let me tell you something. I was angry at myself today. I'm not even going to joke with you. I'm telling you the truth. I was angry at myself today. Why? Because I've been good. I've been on my health kick. I've been on my health regimen. I've been drinking my water. I've been taking care of myself. I've been doing my facial regimen. And I was unprepared today. I didn't have dinner. The day was getting by me. The kids were home. Everyone was hungry. Hassani was too busy to help out. And I'm like, okay, it's pizza tonight. Then I said, well, I'm not going to eat any. I went and I got the pizza, put the pizza in the car as far away from me as I could. And then the aroma got me. I smelled it. I ate it. I was mad at myself. But you know what? I was only mad at myself for a minute. You know, I was just like, oh, okay, I'm going to do better tomorrow. That was not, you know, next time I would do it differently. But what happens when your anger festers? That's when things start to set in and solidify and calcify around your heart. So check out this quick clip of my, one of my favorite videos. You've seen a little bit of it before, but I just think it's so fitting. So check this out. Ever wonder why you feel the way you do? Well, get to know your emotions. When things go wrong, anger is there. This is anger. He will make sure the world knows anger is in control. But what you really need to watch out for is when he's out of control. Get to know all your emotions with Disney Pixar's Inside Out, rated PG. Okay, so, look, anger is a real thing. The emotion is crazy. Have you ever seen road rage? 
Have you ever encountered someone that you're always telling them, calm down, and they're like, I'm fine. Okay, calm down. Or, gosh, you're so intense. Or, relax, there's no rush. Relax, there's no rush. Or, have you ever encountered a person that just seems mad all the time? In their regular speech, it's the way that they talk. You know that they're not mad. They just sound mad. Have you ever met a person like that? And here's the deal, guys. Anger is one of the most dangerous emotions there is. The mental effect that it has on you of robbing your peace, the physical effect on you literally causing sickness and illness, it's the most tormenting emotion, one of the most tormenting emotions out there. And today, I want to make you aware of the fact that there are five anger states. I didn't know that. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, I, I'm not really an angry person. I'm, I'm a pretty um, cool person. Can you go back to the last slide? I'm a pretty cool, calm, and collected person, you know? I don't trip on people. But guess what? When I discovered the five anger states, I said, ooh, I need to really take a look at this. Sorry, guys, there's something in my eye. So here's what I want you to do. Before I meant to say this in the beginning, before we get too far in, I want you to share this with people. There, I want you to share it with as many people as you can in the next 15 to 20 seconds. And I also want you to give me a thumbs up if you know somebody that's angry or just be real. Like, keep it real. Are you angry? I mean, maybe you have something to be angry about. If you are angry, you can give me an angry face. Or if you know somebody that's angry. Because guess what, guys? We have a whole lot of influence in our lives that contribute to our right to be angry. But check out this slide here. What does anger do? Holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. You are the one that get burned. gets burned. Is that deep? Or Look at that. Look at that. That's what holding on to anger looks like. Who is frying? Who is burning? Not the other person, you. So I wanna take you to the slide that talks about the five anger states. And we're gonna hang out here for a minute so that I can pick in my eye and so that you can learn about these anger states. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, the five anger states. Did you, were you aware of this? Anger, anger is obviously anger, I'm mad, you're just an angry person, you've been through things. Then you've got impatience. I did not know that impatience was a state of anger. Now, you, everybody knows what regular old anger is. You get mad at someone, the, that anger might, res, might convert into someone being hostile, fighting, throwing things, just expressing anger in all kinds of ways. Some people express anger by harming themselves. Some people express anger by harming others, okay? You can express anger in many different ways. It's very obvious when someone is angry. It, it doesn't need much explanation. You know this person is angry. But if you think about impatience, if you go back to the impatience slide, go back and forth, thank you. We're working out some kinks here, guys. It's not my usual producer. <laughs> okay, impatience, when you think about impatience, who would consider impatience anger? Who would consider impatience anger? No one. But think about that. Impatience is actually an emotion that could have resulted in you at a, as a child or at some point in your life not being made to feel valuable. So you rush everybody because maybe you were rushed. Or maybe as a child, somebody said, hurry up, you, you're eating too slow. So you, you, know, you, 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 you rush your food. You eat too fast, or you're just rushy. You don't take the time to smell the roses. You don't take the time to, to experience the moment. You're never living in the present state as an impatient person. You're always living for the, for the next moment. You're always rushing to get to nowhere. You know, if you're impatient, your anger is showing up and racing down the road, swerving around people to get around the, the car in front of you just to stop at the same red light that everybody else is stopping at. Have you ever done that? Have you ever had somebody racing all around you, running all up on your bumper, and then they go right around you, and then you pull up right next to them, and you're looking at them like, <laughs> what is going on? Anger, right? It's a form of anger, and it's actually a form of anger that you are 
accosting yourself with, but it also projects onto other people as impatience. You're impatient with people. Now, what about intolerance? Intolerance. Oh, man, it's such a mean thing to be intolerant of people. You know, and this um, this anger shows up where you just you have a standard, right? This standard that everyone has to rise to. It's insane. You may not even live or they may not even live to the standard, but they're intolerant of anything beneath it. They're intolerant of behavior. They don't like the way you wash your hands. They don't like the way you dry your hands. They don't like the way you eat. They don't like the way you chew. They don't like the way you swallow. They don't like the way you drink. They're just intolerant. They can't tolerate kids. They can't tolerate too much sun. They can't tolerate too much rain. They just are intolerant. And intolerance is a form of anger. And it shows up in someone who's always, what is the word? Somebody who's always just um, judgmental. Judgmental. Guys, I didn't know. Did you know that these were, were versions of anger? And I think that many of us kind of weave in and out of these, these different angers all the time. But it made me, I became aware of the fact that not everything is black and white. And you actually can have a lot of empathy for people when you understand where they're coming from. You know, when you see somebody that's just straight angry about stuff all the time, it's just like, okay, what's going on? Like, what's behind all of this anger? The person, they knocked over a glass of water. They, they're they sorry. You know, it was an accident. Things happened. Why, why are you so angry? And a lot of times they don't even know. And then there's the fourth type of anger, and it's called resentment. And resentment is a an anger that is created based on how the person handles the offenses that have happened to them. You know, you've got people, some people that let things roll off their back. It's like, no sweat, I'm okay, no big deal. And then you've got others that hold on to it. And they let those things play over in their head, over and over. And they're really assaulted by it. You know, somebody who has resentment, is it doesn't have peace at night. Their mind is racing, replaying the events, replaying the offense, and, and these angers result in other negative emotion, like lack of forgiveness. You know, when you are resenting someone, it doesn't matter what they say. An apology doesn't mean anything. You resent them for what they did. And I will never forgive you. And that resentment goes right into your heart. Did I say this to you last time that you are dirt? You are dirt. You are a dirt body. And you will go back to the dirt when you die. But deep down in your soul is a garden and every seed that somebody has planted in you or spoken to you you have the right whether or not you're going to till and water that seed or if you're going to uproot it and throw it on up out of there and unfortunately many of us have had seeds planted in us before we were of an age of accountability to be able to say that's not true uh no and the, the, the real truth of it, and I'm including myself so I can say this, is that we're all kids, grown up, big children. Yes. And we're still trying to get approval for things that we weren't approved for, be accepted, understand forgiveness. We're still doing that. We're still trying to reach the level that other people have put on us. We're still trying to reach the bar or grab the carrot that is never going to be obtainable until you just accept who you are and love everything about you and be willing to dig within and uproot all this mess. And these angers are rooted or, or, or have been um, buried or, or sown into your spirit at all times in your life, many different times in your life. So let's talk about the last one, probably, in my opinion, the worst one, because I never understood hate. My God, if anybody, well, I shouldn't say if anybody, but listen, I, I, I could say I, I, I would have a reason to hate if I really wanted to. If hate was at all a, a, an acceptable emotion to carry around, I could find some reasons to hate people. But I never understood that because it's such a strong emotion. Hate. Hate is at the level where you would just let somebody drop dead and wouldn't give them a glass of water, wouldn't call the police. I mean, hate 
Hate is so strong. And the reaction to your body is beyond causing cancer and ulcers and all kinds of digestive tract issues. I am not a medical professional, and this is not medical advice, but I am a studied and learned human being. And I have read things that have blown my mind about what these negative emotions can do to your body. And I suggest that you look in to these negative emotions and see what you might be able to release and see if it, if it um, connects to anything that you might be experiencing. You will be surprised. You'll be like, oh my God, I've been doing that. Do you understand? Even stress, something that comes upon us as a result of our life and things that happen to us. You know, you might find your, your face is, is twitching. Now, why am I saying that? Because literally about four or five months ago, my face was doing this. I'm not even joking. It was like that serious. So much to the point where I'm like, Hassani, look at my face. Look at my face, Hassani. And he, would, and, I'm, and he would be like, you're doing that. And I'm like, I promise you, I'm not doing that. That's what stress can do to you. So wrecking with your nerves and whatnot. Guys, ladies, we cannot any longer allow ourselves to carry around these emotions that are negative, negatively affecting us. We have got to make a commitment and make a pact. That's why we're here to support one another, that we are going to consciously, daily, hourly, and even by the minute, release negative emotions. Now, I want to tell you what to do with them, but not yet, Sonny, sorry, not yet. Here's the thing. These emotions are energies. Everything is energy and has some kind of a frequency. We don't have to go down that road. But the point is, is that you cannot get rid of the energy. You can only transform the energy. You cannot remove, when you have, think about when you're angry. Think about the time when you were the most angry and your chest was welling up with fury. That energy is there. And it plays itself out in one way or another, doesn't it? And didn't it? What did you do? Did you break something? Did you tear something up? Did you punch somebody out? What did you do? Did you go, ah! because you couldn't do anything else. You did something with that energy, didn't you? Ah! Didn't you? Did you know that in the wild, ducks, after they go into a battle and have a fight, I mean, they ducks go in. You should Google that, that's interesting. But ducks, they fight. And after a fight, they'll shake their feathers off. Because what happens physically in the body, in their bodies, is that it releases the chemicals of the adrenaline that had them able to fight at that level. We do the same thing. You can shake things off. And so what happens is that if you're not going to display that energy, if you're angry, violently, you'll do like, or you'll start pacing, or you'll start running, or sometimes you'll hit a punching bag. I'm saying that to say you cannot get rid of that energy, but you can transform that energy. So transforming anger, you need to think of other ways, positive ways, to make that anger do something else. You can transform your anger into love. How do you do that? Oh my God, I'm furious at this person. How am I going to transform anger into love? Well, you're going to change your mindset right there. You're going to walk away. You're going to be honest about what you, what part you played into it. You Guys, we have got to be responsible with our emotions. And you've got to work at how you're going to handle your emotions. Only you know you. You know your boiling point. You know when you're getting from, you know, quote, blue, what is it, green, and it's getting yellow, and it's going, and it's getting red, and it's done. Once you're red, it's done. There's no going back. It's too late. So you've got to figure out, okay, let me transfer this conversation to a loving conversation while it's over here in the green section. Maybe I can still do it when I'm in yellow, but once I get to red, it's done. So we have to know our limits. You need to transform your impatience to patience. You need to transform your intolerance back to tolerance. And you need to transform your resentment to forgiveness. So important. And you need to transform your hate to love. So let's go to the next slide where we're going we're gonna to talk about how, give you some five tips 
on how to actually maybe do a, a practice run at home or, you know, start practicing how am I going to get rid of these emotions, depending on what emotion you're dealing with. And this actually happens, you can use these steps really for any negative emotion. Um, oops. All right. We're going to go to the slide, which is the one with the glass. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. So now, understanding the impact. Okay. I want you to understand the impact. Okay. We don't have a slide, but I need to see it. Number one. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. This is live. This is another Wendy Williams moment, so bear with me. Listen, if you're bearing with me, I need a thumbs up, and it's okay, and don't worry about it. Hey, girl, I'm with you, <laughs> okay? All right, so understanding the impact, that's number one. And I just tried to explain that to you. The impact of carrying around these negative emotions is humongous on your health and on your mindset. This is how you have people that have, have no peace. This is how you have someone that years down the line, they feel hopeless and they're buried in anger, resentment, um, their discontent. They just have gone off the deep end and they don't even know how to get back. They're so far in. That is the impact. The impact is separating yourself from God, separating yourself from people. It literally buries you in these negative emotions and eventually takes over your body and your health and your and takes over your, your body and sends you down a, a spiraling path to sickness. This is just what it is. Number two, you need to recognize that you need to honor the law. You know, hate and anger and all these negative emotions, what is it steeped in? Unforgiveness. You can't act like that if you are in a, in a state of forgiveness, if you forgive people, if you have a, a, a heart of kindness. And so how do you expect to be forgiven if you, are ref you refuse to forgive? How can you expect forgiveness if you refuse to forgive? And then you need to understand the why. And that to me is huge. And that actually goes back to last week's exercise where you really went through all the things that hurt you and said, okay, this is the stuff that I can change and this is the stuff that I can't change. The why, why am I angry? Why am I impatient? What happened in my life that caused me to be that way? Let me sit back to, yeah, I do remember. I do remember my mom always rushed me. She was never patient with me. I had to hurry up and get my clothes on, hurry up and run upstairs, hurry up and eat my food, hurry, 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 hurry. And so now I'm, I'm constantly hurrying. And now I'm doing the same thing to my own children. Now I'm hurrying my children. You, you see that? So you need to understand the why behind your anger so that you can extinguish the anger, extinguish that fire. And then um, the other thing is you need to offer compassion. Okay? You need to offer compassion. Because all of us are on this journey and we all have stuff, right? Um, if, you, if you resonated with any of this anger conversation, if you said, yep, that's me, I'm angry and I'm dealing with that, I might be dealing with all five of those, well, then you need to find compassion. That is a wonderful starting place for you because you might be someone that is, is resentful and you know that you've hurt people in life and maybe you didn't do the right thing. You know, maybe it's time for you to open the door to forgiveness on some things. You know, maybe maybe you could be a little bit more tolerant of people who aren't perfect, who are maybe a little clumsy or who don't have all the etiquette together. They don't know, you know, um, specific etiquette or they should have known better or my God, they can't even, they don't know the difference between this and that. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe you can be a little bit more compassionate with someone and recognize that you're, you're in perfection because you're dealing with some stuff. And then the last step that you can practice and work on is just moving forward. We started this last week. Realizing what we can change and what we can't. Recognizing that. And then being willing to move on and be willing to change. Be excited about change. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited about change. I'm so excited about change that I'm diving into every direction to say, okay, you know, I'm so, I'm so vulnerable right now to my own imperfections. I'm, I, I want, I'm looking, I'm on a scavenger hunt for the imperfections. No, we're never going to be perfect. No. And we're not even looking for perfection. But what we are looking for is to free ourselves from other people's mess and other people's bitter roots that have been embedded in us that we may not even be conscious of, 
that's keeping us from um, operating at our highest level and achieving what God has created us to do. We do want that. We do want to be free from the burden of our own negativity towards ourselves, our self-talk and what we say to ourselves all the time because somebody once said it to us and now it's on replay and we're not even aware of it. We do want to release that. So no, we're not looking for perfection, but every week we want to be figuring out, okay, what else can I unearth? When you go out this, the rest of this week, when you're out and about and you know your usual habits, there might have been something that I said that hit you and you're like, yep, that's me. Mm-hmm, that's me. Well, if that's you, what can you do for the rest of this week to make a difference? If you're an intolerant person, when you go to order your coffee, can you be a little bit more polite to the, to the barista that's making your coffee? Can you, when they screw it up, because nobody ever gets it right. When they screw it up, could you be a little bit more compassionate, sensitive, patient? What good is it to know these things if we're unwilling to change and be better? And what's the point of this whole journey if we're the exact same mess <laughs> that we were the year before? We should be growing, guys. We should be like this. Yeah, sometimes we go like this, you know. But there should be some up-leveling. You know, maybe we go down, but there should be some up-leveling. You shouldn't be the same person 10 years from now. Your whole body, your DNA is brand new in seven years. So I want you to think about that. And, and here's something that, that I learned today, which I'm so going to get into. And that is, <clears throat> you know, I, um, I consider myself an easygoing person. I'm open-minded, all of that. Okay, yeah, 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 right. But I discovered essential oils. Essential oils that actually have a certain frequency that allows you and puts you in a state where you're able to be more forgiving or release anger or release resentment. Do you see what I'm saying? When I say that I'm on a journey to discover things, God made the oils. Read the Bible. Frankincense, myrrh. Hey, everything really is already here on the earth for us. You know what? I may not need to be, you know, bombarded with all these chemicals, I might be at, able to actually go to the source. So I'm going to look into it. I'm not encouraging you to do that, but I'm excited about this journey and the potential to rise to another level, to be able to love harder and bigger, to be able to help more people, to lead more women. I want everybody to rise to their highest level of potential, especially the ones connected to me. So you are able if you are willing. And I just thank you guys for joining me today. Sorry for all the technical glitches. <laughs> it's a live show. We're working on it and every week. We're going to get better and better because that's what this journey is about, getting better. And until next time, I will see you soon. Bye. Can bring us